Do you remember the scene and remember the Titans when Ed Yost and Herman Boone are taking T.C. Williams High School through two a days and there's a fumble on the ground and Ed Yost tells the tells the young man to jump on it like a starving man on a Christmas ham? Well, that's what Mississippi State football fans had to feel like when they saw the oasis in the desert that was Jeff Levy's innovative offense out on the horizon once they found out he was going to be the new hire after Zach Arnett's era ended there in Starkville. Hello, everyone. I am Blaine Gilmer. Welcome into SEC Unfiltered. It goes without saying that Mississippi State had several challenges on offense last year under Zach Arnett. That is not expected to be the case with Jeff Lebby coming to town, as Jeff Lebby is one of the more creative minds in all of college football he's had some very tremendous influences over the years including lane kiffin at ole miss where he spent uh, time as his offensive coordinator there before moving on to be the offensive coordinator for brent venables at oklahoma and now is the head man at mississippi state he may have offensive coordinators by name and things of that nature but make no mistake about it jeff levy is going to be the one that is cooking up the game plan and calling the plays for the Bulldogs here in the 2024 season. And it's going to be done with some new weapons, some new players, some new key pieces in mind, namely at the quarterback position in Blake Shapin, an experienced guy from Baylor that has played at times at a high level. At other times, uh, there has been some struggles, and Jeff Levy's going to have to one, hope that he can keep him healthy, injury-free, and then also can develop him into this new system that he's going to be playing in rather quickly. Also, you have Kelly Akari that comes over from UTEP a thousand, over a 1,000-yard season, 21.5 yards per reception. So he is a guy that can that can make the, the play down the field. He can take the top off the defense. And then you also have Kevin Coleman that comes over from Louisville that should be an added boost to guys that are already there, like Justin Robinson, like Creed Whittemore. So I think there's going to be weapons on the outside. You know, Jeffrey Pittman's going to be the primary guy at running back that had the most carries and yards that returns out of the backfield for Mississippi State from a year ago. Also, Mike Wright uh, may find a way to be used some in, in different packages there as well. His athleticism by by Jeff Levy. So what we're going to do today is we're going to do a film breakdown and tell you what you can expect from Je this Jeff Levy offense and what it's going to do in terms of how it dictates things to defenses and creates advantages for a team that admittedly Mississippi State is not going to line up against just everyone, most anyone that they play and just be the more talented team in the SEC. But when you're not what I've always said about Mississippi State in a way to have success there, and Mike Leach did this, Dan Mullen did this, you're either going to be better than, less than, or different than. Well, the talent level most of the time is going to be less than, but can you be different than? Can you do some things that are going to give you a schematical advantage and then just lessen that talent gap enough to where you're able to take advantage of certain things and you're able to get some momentum because momentum is a real thing as well in these football games. We're going to dive into all of that today and how Jeff Levy is going to go about doing that as the play caller, the head coach, the head man in charge there of Mississippi State football. But first, guys, we got to pay the bills and say – Thank you to mybookie.ag for partnering with us, guys. We hope that you will partner with them for any of your wagering betting needs there on mybookie.ag. Guys, March Madness is coming up as we record this. There's going to be a ton of games out there to, to put your input on to go out there and put a little extra on, whether it's the total, whether it's the lines, whether it is prop bets inside of them, mybookie.ag has a prop bet builder that has live in-game betting, for, so every single play matters. And it's not just March Madness. The NBA is going to be going on. You got baseball getting going, MLBs in spring training. 
MMA, soccer, whatever you could want. It's on mybookie.ag. Also, guys, whether you're at home or on the go, it does not matter. Laptop or cell phone, it's a mobile-friendly website. So go to mybookie.ag and use that promo code on the screen, S-E-C-U, and you will get a 50% deposit bonus up to $1,000. There's many ways to make your initial deposit. You can check those out on mybookie.ag. Bet, win, and get paid, mybookie.ag. All right, guys, so let's dive into this film here on Jeff Lebby, and we'll catch you on the other side of our film breakdown here. Okay, let's look at this play here by Jeff Lebby in Oklahoma offense at this point in time, playing against Texas in the Cotton Bowl here, uh, the Red River shootout, and a lot of a lot of passion in this game, a lot of excitement. So they kind of were settling down here early and then trying to get into some stuff after the opening script where, okay, now where can we take advantage of some things? So let's go ahead and let this, let this play just a little bit here. You can see before we do, we've got a two-by-two two set, okay, two, two receivers to each side. You'll see this a lot out of a Jeff Levy team. And you notice how close to the sideline over here that this receiver is. He's really split out wide. This one almost to the top of the numbers with the ball, almost on the opposite hash. So they're spreading this defense out. They're getting a too high look on the back side, on, on the back end of the defense by Texas. So pre-snap. You're going to see Dylan Gabriel motion this running back out, and when he motions the running back out, they're going to be they're going to be seeing how they adjust over here. And all they did was they bumped linebackers and this nickel defender out. So on the snap of the ball now inside of the box here, we have a we have numbers. We have one, two, three, four, five offensive linemen four defensive front defenders, and then two linebackers that are kind of halfway in the box a little bit. So as this runs right here, you can see Dylan Gabriel's eyes are coming out towards this inside receiver and looking at defenders, whether it is that he's looking at this defender to see if he is leveraged to take this swing route, which he is, he's, he's leveraged to take that away, or whether he's looking at this defender to see if he can take away this route underneath that he kind of runs a little box out route. Whatever it is, he gets an ability to run. The quarterback run is the best option there. He takes that right up the middle. I think if he had just kept going a little bit better, he might have had a little bit more success. But overall, and we'll let the play, we'll let the play run here, overall, um, a successful play on first down where you able to read it, able to pick up a few yards and get at least halfway. I think they got about a five yard gain there. Okay, so not everything is just some type of groundbreaking development when it comes to offensive football. Sometimes you just have to do some simple things to help you identify things early on, and some pre snap movement can do that. We'll see right here, we'll see the outside receiver for Oklahoma motion in and become the number two receiver up there on the short field side as they're on the right hash. And you can see right away the quarterback knows, okay, he's moving inside and staying aligned over him. We have man-to-man -man coverage. Dylan Gabriel knows this now. Yet still, even with this look over here, and they're going to have all five offensive linemen plus the running back in, so six-man protection here. They're going to still try to get a little bit of a of a switch release down here on the bottom to try to bust something open down here on the bottom because you'll see Dylan Gabriel's eyes go down towards that side of the field. You can see Dylan Gabriel looking. He's saying, okay, do they bust this switch release here? Maybe one guy miscommunicates and, and, and the number one receiver just comes wide open on this corner route. By the time Dylan Gabriel hits his back foot, he knows now that that is not there. Even with Drake Stoops over here, who's a reliable check down, there's someone over here guarding it. But let's go look at what happened back up top while that was going on. So we go and look. We knew we had man coverage up top. And because of that, the inside receiver 
now goes back out into the flat. He t- takes this defender with him. And we've got a one-on-one matchup where this guy's running trail inside technique. Actually, he's outside leverage, but he's on that he's on that hip, and that receiver is going to use his momentum because right now there's nothing really stopping this, this receiver from just saying, hey, I've got inside access. I can run a post. So this guy really, this defender really has to try to stay with him if he's going to run that post route. And what this defender, what this receiver does is he sits it down and works across his face, and it is an easy completion for Dylan Gabriel over there. So we'll run it back, let it play once again. But I wanted to show you guys this play uh, and just some simple movement pre-snap. Uh, you can play with tempo and still have some pre-snap movement because that's what Oklahoma did with Jeff Levy. But you can see there's the motion. We've identified the main coverage. And then right here, boom, cross his face. That's knowing what you have on both sides. Great job by Dylan Gabriel. Sometimes you just got to get a little creative in the run game. And sometimes that means, hey, most of the time it's going to be a one-back deal in a Jeff Levy offense. But sometimes you've got dynamic players, uh, guys who are versatile players you can bring in and use in different ways. This is Drake Stoops, who's an inside receiver for Oklahoma last year. But they've brought him into the backfield, give a two-back look, have an H-back here that they're going to utilize to block on the edge. And a little bit of eye candy after the snap. We'll go ahead and uh, bring it forward just a couple of frames here as we as we see a safety roll down into the box. We're going to see a counter look on the backside where the guard and the tackle are showing pull back the other way. That's going to hold the linebackers for just a second, and that's going to allow this H-back to get a hat on a hat right here on the edge defender and the running back to lead up on the force defender and then utilize the speed. And we had a, a nice block here on the outside as well where the outside receiver came down and walled off this defender as well. So we have a nice little pickup on the run game right there. That's a five, six yard gain. So this is actually the winning play by Jeff Levy in Oklahoma against Texas this past year. You can see here down deep in the red zone, uh, this is a play inside the five yard line where they are formation, formationally putting Texas into a bind. You can see one, two, three receivers down here on the trip side to the field. So all of this space that these defenders have to cover over here, and you have a tight end up top. So that gives an extra gap in the surface. It also gives an extra hat in the run game up to the to the top side where they could run this running back across. They could motion, short motion the running back across and have quarterback run over here on this side. They could have some jet sweep action going this way with the receiver. So lots of different options. It puts Texas formationally into a bind. So let's see what they end up doing. Some jet sweep, like we said, this could end up being jet sweep run with this tight end helping block here. Um, this could end up being some kind of counter off of this. But let's see how Texas plays it. You can see a guy running with him, but then what does he do right here? He stops and he's pointing at his teammates. So some communication is having to go on in a Crucial moment here in a big game. Easy for Oklahoma because they know what they're doing. Hard for Texas because they have to make the adjustment on the fly. And what ends up happening, Texas has a corner blitz that they end up running right here. So, look, you can see. And it doesn't hurt when you have a left tackle that can block the defensive end and the corner at the same time. But what happened on this play that was the biggest deal was when this defender stopped and he pointed over here, Dylan Gabriel knows that over here, that either a guy's going to have to pick up man and match him quickly, or they've, they're playing some kind of zone coverage. So when it comes down to it, he sees the the he sees the coverage on the backside. He doesn't like it, and then he throws over here. Had a high low beater on this guy right here. He chose the he he got sucked up by the flat defender. Completes it to the backside touchdown. Game winner for Oklahoma and Jeff Levy in this offense. 
Okay, we saw in the deep red zone down by the goal line against Texas, we saw what Oklahoma did where they had the trip set up here, had the tight end down. We talked about the the extra gap down here in the run game. We talked about the ability to possibly do some jet sweep action. We even talked about the running back could come over here and be an extra hat in the run game for the quarterback. Let's see what happens. We get motion. This time he stops. And, okay, now we still have the same amount of gaps and the same amount of hats that we can get over here until we add now the running back to the equation. Now we have an extra hat and really an extra gap, if you want to think about it, with this running back going to be fitting up in here for what is going to be quarterback run. He picks up that linebacker. Quarterback is able to make a move, and it's a successful play. We'll watch it from the end zone copy here so you can see what this looks like. All right, so we're going to get the motion. Nothing really changes on the front. We'll see right here that we got a hat, 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 and we're going to pick up this last one here with the running back. So we're going to pull out there and get a nice little seal there. Here's an example against West Virginia. You can see here they're in empty Oklahoma is under Levy. One, two, three, four, five receivers out wide. And West Virginia playing a lot of zone coverage in this game. So they're saying, okay, what can we do to, to kind of just settle in here and find a good little zone beater where they're going to run the curls concept on both sides. So you're going to see curl, you're going to see curl flat here. The number one receiver in the curl flat. You had curl and flat over here with the with Stoops working over the middle of the ball. And Gabriel just goes through his progressions. And this when this defender kind of sits or widens out a little bit, he knows he has the flat, the curl right here behind it with the flat pulling it out. So nice little completion to get things going there for Oklahoma early in this game under Levy. Okay, and then here we are in empty once again. Remember, formationally, Jeff Levy is going to put strain on you. We've seen pre-snap movement. We've seen, look how wide this split is. He's all the way almost up at the sideline. This, this, the, the ball is on that left hash, guys, and you've got a guy that is all the way out here midway between the sideline and the numbers down there. That is a lot of space for this defense to cover. We saw earlier on with the curls concept, we saw that this defender was going to be dropping out, dropping out, dropping out. They play a cover three look out of this, out of this defense does West Virginia. And they got him with the curls concept on the, on the inside of it, where this receiver came and ran a curl route. And this one ran a flat. Well, this one, now they're going to say, hey, because we are over here on this left side of the field, we know that this this safety has a lot of room to cover to get to that middle of the field. And this guy has deep third over here, so he has to respect anything going deep third. So they're going to use that to their advantage. See what happens here. We've got the different route combinations where, okay, we've got a guy that, that's running a hitch he's going to uh, occupy the flat defender and now this guy has because of where the ball is on the field he had to work out to get to his deep third they're just going to run by and say okay this safety that we said on the backside that had all that room to cover he's not going to be able to get there in time because we're going to put our foot in the ground on that third step we're going to catch one two three and we're going to throw the skinny right here the little the little glance route in behind the linebacker Beautiful throw in the window here, and you'll see it's caught on in stride. He's able to make that safety that was coming across the field miss. Beautiful job. So, again, let's tell you what you're seeing here. You're seeing empty. You're seeing a team that they know runs a lot of zone coverage, and because they have formation them into the boundary, that has now they want to have four over three over here, one, two, three, four, over these three receivers to prevent any type of screens or easy completions. 
They also want to be sound in the box, so they have to keep these guys to at least have five in the box, one, two, three, four, five, and try to cheat this guy as well. But they're playing zone coverage, so they have deep third, deep third in the middle, deep third. They're going to use it against them right here with this formation, like I said, into the boundary. A lot of ground for this safety to have to cover to get to the middle of the field, and they use it to their advantage especially when they just ran the curls route in there earlier in the game to give them a different look. Now it's the number two receiver, sticks his foot in the ground, quarterback delivers that ball when he's turning his head, and we have a big gain there for Oklahoma and for Jeff Lebby. And you're going to see a lot of this, guys, when it comes to Mississippi State. I think they've got some talented wide receivers, and I think Blake Shapin is going to be able to do this right here, what Dylan Gabriel did, and just deliver that ball accurately and let his receivers run with it. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Jeff Lebby is going to do a great job of creating space on the field, both formationally, whether that is spreading those wide receivers and, and getting them way out there and putting the, the kind of whole defender in conflict or how are you going to adjust your shell on things so to some of those stacks. Also, whether they condense things in, they give you different looks, and I think that's going to be number one. Number two is tempo, what they're able to do with the tempo because they do things that are packaged so easily in the system for them that they're able to do it quickly and function extremely efficiently. And then also just being able to be creative in their in their design of things and do things differently that, that you don't see a lot of times out of other people also, really, really taking advantage of packaging multiple plays together in one concept, if you will, that gives your players plenty of options and plenty of counters to whatever the defense throws at them. So I think that's something that Mississippi State fans have to be excited about. And I hope you enjoyed this video that gives you a little bit of a glimpse of some of the things that you're going to see from Jeff Lebby and the Mississippi State Bulldogs in 2024. Remember... You can follow SEC Unfiltered on any of the socials you see below there. Of course, here on YouTube, we'd love for you to su subscribe. It's totally free. Hit that like button on this video as well if you think it's warranted. And then also on Instagram, on X, on Facebook, all of it there. All of it there. We really, really appreciate you following us there as well at SEC Unfiltered, and go over to the website, secunfiltered.com. Remember, we're presented by mybookie.ag. Use the promo code SECU to get your 50% deposit match up to $1,000. And, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. God bless you, and we'll catch you next time to talk more Mississippi State football, more SEC football, and everything SEC right here on the best SEC entity on the Internet, SEC Unfiltered.